Hi, I'm James Schillinglaw, and I'm here at the ASTA Global Convention in San Francisco. We're just wrapping up here, but I'm here with a familiar face, Zane Kirby, President and CEO of ASTA. And we're going to talk to Zane about what happened here and also what's happening with ASTA right today. And you're going to find out about that and more on Insider Travel Report. It's been a really great conference. It, it, it's been amazing. We, we're we're kind of shutting it down right now. We've got a few more hours left. But so, how, how, do, how do you think it went for this year? Oh, I've just been really, really pleased. You know, the, the energy that sort of began in Chicago as we restarted in person events last year was just carried through here in San Francisco. The hotel's been great, the staff has been great, uh, and, and just our members getting back together and, and talking to each other and sharing and learning uh, has been a really wonderful a couple of days. And then, of course, the highlight uh, last night we had the advocacy dinner, which has become sort of the must must be at event of your ASTA Global Convention, right? Yeah, that's, that's a great, great night out. And our, you know, our team did a wonderful job. The Palace Hotel is such a historic and, and wonderful uh, venue for, for that, that dinner. And you know, I, I was really, really happy. We, we give out a number of awards there. Our former chairman, Dave Hirschberger, won the Paul Rudin Award. Uh, it, it, for all the, he, he was the chairman during COVID, so he had to put up, as you did, with a lot of you know incredible uh, uh, crisis that you pulled through. Right? Absolutely. So he won the Paul Rudin Award. Um, Be Betsy Geiser also won a, the, one of the Barbara O'Hare Awards, as did Jen Lee. And then we honored Ar Arnold Donald, uh, the, the vice chair of Carnival Corp, uh, who's just been such a gracious and, and, and stalwart supporter of ASTA for so many years. We're really glad to have him back. This is the third time at ASTA in the last six years. No, very supportive and, and he spoke with you and you interviewed him uh, he really is a great guy I've known got to know him very well over the last nine years and of course he's sort of st stepping back a little bit but uh, he'll be missed but I think he might show up a few times still. <laughs> I think you're right great yeah. great guy now uh, let's talk a little about the other thing about that dinner is you managed to raise uh, I think three hundred and seventy six thousand dollars at the last count uh, for your ASTA PAC, your, your, your lobbying fund. Right? Yeah, our advocacy efforts are so critical to the work that we do to try to educate lawmakers about issues that are important to our members. And so, yeah, I, I think, you know, it goes without saying, uh, our cruise partners last night really uh, shouldered the, the vast majority of that, of that weight there between Carnival uh, Corp and Norwegian Cruise Lines and Royal Caribbean International. Uh, they, they, between the three of them, they donated over $300,000. And then we had 200 individuals who, who added in to, to make up the rest of that of that seventy six thousand dollars you're mentioning but yeah that, that that work is so critical and so the funds that we raise at, at uh, the advocacy dinner are really important to kind of fueling us and, and allowing us to to plan effectively for the next several months because we have some some important issues that we've got to take to Congress the, the not the least of which is is to make sure that if the Department of Transportation uh, you know uh, is, is going to uh, uh, put uh, travel advisors on the hook we need to let for, Congress for airline refunds which right. you just appeared earlier this week at I think it's hopeful that probably they'll recognize that the uh, travel advisors don't have the funds. They're not the ones holding on to them. So hopefully that's going to be a good one. But that's the kind of issue that is really important and why we need the ASTA advocacy and and ASTA lobbying. It is. And I would say that, you know, the Department of Transportation, they're focused on making sure that consumers don't get a runaround when they're looking for a refund. And the fact is that our members are taking money and then passing it on. You know, the department doesn't really care that, that about that. They just care that about who is the merchant of record. And, and they're, they're tired of, get, of consumers getting the runaround, and they're, they're going to fix that problem. And so it's important for, our, for the department to understand how and the money flows and where it flows and how quickly it flows right to the, the, the end user who's the airline in order for, for us to sort of get out of the middle of this quickly. And I, I honestly don't think they understand that right now. I know we did a good job educating them on Monday, but I don't think that this uh, fight is over at all. Okay, well, hopefully they will understand and we'll get through this. But there are other issues post-COVID. You're still trying to get some funds. Uh, you know, the ERTC, uh, which is, is uh, explain that one, because I, I, it's, it's, it's where, what is that? That's yeah, that's the Employee Tax Re uh, Retention Tax Credit. Yeah. And it's, it's a, a program from the depart from the IRS and what it does is for employers it, it gives them a very generous tax credit if they kept them on the payroll during the 2021 year uh, it was it was originally granted by Congress in the, the cares and the, the America rescue plan for the entire year of 2021 and then when they passed the infrastructure bill they stripped out the fourth quarter ERTC in order to, to as a pay for for other programs they want to do which was completely inappropriate 
and, uh, and unfair because our members had made hiring decisions based on the ERTC being available to them. So uh, we've been working really hard to get uh, in there an, over 160 co-sponsors to the House bill right now. So we're, we're hoping that, you know, probably won't happen before uh, elections this November, but there will be a flurry of activity after that toward the end of the year. We, we definitely want uh, that piece of legislation to move. But on the whole, your members seem to be reporting much better sales. Uh, this looks like a, a much better year than we ever thought was possible 2022. Everybody said 23 things are going to get better, but I mean, 22 has been crazy. It, it's true. Um, travel has roared back, and I think I, I mentioned it yesterday. Unfortunately, uh, the, the, the kind of uh, sales or service has not yet has not yet caught up to, to travel demand. Our members are snowed in. They're certainly uh, taking tons and tons of phone calls. It is taking longer per transaction, which is which is a little bit of concern. But prices are certainly higher, and, and people are absorbing them. Uh, the only other thing I'd say about that is, is yeah, if you know anyone who's, who, who wants to become a travel advisor, send them our way. I've got 10 members that are willing to hire them and train them. I know. There are jobs available. So there you go. So you talk to Zane. And you can, you, if, if you're watching this and you're not a travel advisor, this might be a good time to become one. Now, one of the things about being a travel advisor that you addressed here is you now uh, you put out a new credo for ASTA about what being a travel advisor is all about. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, we're tasked by the board of directors to, to think through, you know, we have a mission, our mission's very clear as an organization, but more along the lines of the profession, what, what are the sort of core tenets of the profession? And those are really simple, that, that, at, that travel advisors are, are, are here, they're professionals, they're, it's a knowledge-based industry, uh, they are continually uh, uh, looking for certifications and to improve their, 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 the, the knowledge of a very complex travel system. And the reality is we want to normalize the charging of professional fees for the services that they render. We want that, we want to normalize that practice because really the, there's so much that our members are doing for the consumer themselves. You know, and, and many of our, our, our members charge professional fees, but we really want to normalize that. And so that is one plank, it's a credo, and so you're doing that. Um, so the other thing you did was you're going to update the website for ASTA, right? Yeah, uh, our, our former, our, our current website kind of looks like an old 1980s uh, library with uh, clicks to everywhere. And so it, it really was not befitting an association of, of travel professionals whose job it is to, to make people's travel dreams become reality. And so we are, the board of directors made an enormous investment in this. Uh, we're so happy with the way it looks and we're featuring it here and are going to launch it September 1st. Excellent. Now, just looking ahead, this, this has been a successful conference, and you got two things coming up uh, very quickly. We're going to see the repeat, uh, the, the River Cruise Expo in Budapest, and then you're moving the whole conference date for the Global Con uh, ASTA Convention, and you're going to have in Puerto Rico in May, right? That's right, right. It's going to coincide with National Travel Advisor Day as part of National Travel and Tourism Week, but we're so happy to be going to Puerto Rico. Uh, they've been a fantastic partner of ours, and we can't wait. They're doing so many wonderful things to kind of uh, add to the, the experience for, for travel advisors that come. They're going to host 60 to, on, on two-day uh, uh, jaunts across the island to different places. Uh, we're going to have a fantastic time there. Well, that's fantastic. Well, I look forward to seeing you both at River Cruise Expo and in Puerto Rico. And after this great success for this event, uh, I, it looks like you're going to be, everybody's going to come for those two events, I hope. Anything else you want to say to our uh, 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 readers and viewers out there? That'll wrap it up. Thanks, James. Thanks for you being here. We appreciate you and appreciate all your readers and hope that they'll join ASTA. I'm James Schillinglaw, and this is Insider Travel Report.